Hello, and welcome to the Area 1 Fish of the Week, where we take a deep dive into a fish that we've caught. I'm your host and Senior Product Manager, Kel Jackson, and excited for this week, December 13th. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So this week, uh, we have a fish that is a credential harvester, and it's going to be an interesting one. So let's uh, jump right into it. So if we imagine we see uh, an email that comes to a user, and it says... Uh, appears to be coming from Microsoft and it asks for the user to authenticate ironically because of a fish. Uh, and so what would happen if the user were to click that particular link uh, the, saying activate account, they'd be taken to a page that looks fairly legitimate, shows their email address, obviously not hard to, to get since they're already emailing that person, but shows the email address and just asks them to enter their password. Obviously if the user were to do that, it would have the username and password for that email and allow the attacker to do any number of things, uh, having full access to at least Microsoft and their potentially their email to be able to compromise that email address, if not other parts of uh, Office 365, uh, and then be able to spread ver or, excuse me, horizontally throughout the organization from there and potentially wreak havoc. Uh, actually, credential harvesters and this form of compromise is you know, something we've seen in major breaches such as uh, that Sony hack from uh, North Korea about a year ago. So it's a pretty, it seems a pretty simplistic, but uh, sometimes simple works. And so, you know, stopping this kind of attack and stopping users from uh, giving in their credentials in this kind of way is dramatically important for organizations. So let's talk a little bit more about, you know, what's special and what's interesting about this particular fish. So, you know, when, you, when we think about email security, you know, we tend to think about a few different things which help protect us and help safeguard us from things like this. Well, what's interesting about this particular fish is that, you know, the attacker knew, uh, knows, uh, you know, what those things are and in a lot of ways avoids a lot of them. So first, they actually compromised a legitimate email address from a big domain. Um, and so they actually sent the mail from there. So step one, you know, if you were to look for reputation of sender or, and things of that nature, uh, you know, it would pass all of those checks. And the next, since obviously it's coming from a, repu uh, a reputable uh, address from the internet, it's going to pass all of those standard email checks, verifications that you'd expect, SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. So again, you know, those basic email auth, uh, basic email uh, sanity checks are all going to pass there. Next, if you were sort of, uh, you know, one of the main things that people tend to look for are attachments. You know, this is not going to contain any attachments into that uh, basic email. Uh, it's just basically a logo um, and a link. Uh, so not too much text to go on um, and not too many words that are calling for immediate action or any, or any things that are going to raise a lot of red flags. So the email itself is going to, you know, just really contain some text and a link. Next, they actually, um, you know, piggybacking on that compromised legitimate email, they compromise a different domain out in the world that's been out there for a while and actually stood up that infrastructure for that um, um, for that uh, website that they were asking for that username and password and they actually stood it up on some hidden section of the compromised uh, URL. So if, you know, think, typically what a lot of link inspections do is they look for things like brand new domains or they look for um, known bad parts of the internet. Um, you know, those type of checks uh, were, would have all passed because, they, you know, again, they compromised some place in the world that, um, you know, would pass those checks. You know, it's a, a legitimate part of the Internet minus the fact that it was compromised. So what we see here is a pretty sophisticated attack. Uh, a lot of the things that we would think about uh, that we would check for for an email to stop this fish from landing in an inbox, this user would... Uh, would would those kind of checks excuse me would pass and so kind of kind of scary kind of troubling but luckily uh, area one uh, was able to catch this fish so uh, kind of giving a little bit a last bit of information around some of the different targets they they tended to be very very uh, targeted in their targets so um, we have a few different examples kind of they looked at a logistics firm they looked at a, a large industrial a furniture manufacturer and really we didn't see them. Uh, you know, tend to send this to more than maybe a couple people at each of those locations. And so, you know, if you think about, you know, massive spam or, you know, shotgun approaches, you know, that tend to look for high volume, that's another reason, another thing in which uh, wouldn't have raised a red flag here. So very targeted um, um, in, its, in its profile and its range. And again, it, it uh, um, 
would have missed some of, some of those t the things that we would tend to look for from a more spammy type sender. And to give you an example of uh, what that email flow looks like and how everyone was able to make that detection. So coming from that uh, malicious sender, that compromised uh, sender, down past through the uh, secure internet gateway, you can think of someone like a Mimecast or an Ironport, out into um, area one is when uh, we were able behind those defenses, behind those existing tools that were bought, that were missed, uh, area one was able to make that detection and ultimately send that email to the quarantine, stopping that fish from ever reaching the end target, from ever reaching that end user. So even though this, this fairly, I don't know necessarily say sophisticated, but it's fairly uh, clever, uh, fairly robust for looking for standard telltale signs of a fish, uh, despite all of the the work that that uh, malicious attacker went through, that this attack was still detected and, and blocked. So, you know, the key of, you know, how was Area 1 able to find that and able, able to make that detection where it really comes down to, to two of the things that we're doing all the time. First is our proactive crawling of the internet. So having a good understanding both from uh, good places in the internet as well as known harboring areas of the internet for malicious attackers proactively scanning looking for you know are things being compromised are is infrastructure being stood up um, you know what's happening out in the world and proactively scanning it just the same way that Google does scanning to be able to find you know things of interest when you search uh, we're using uh, scanning to do uh, proactive finding things of interest for attackers. And so we use that information to be able to feed into our intelligence to be able to make determinations before an email is even uh, sent out into the world. And then secondly, and very important for this particular uh, fish that was caught, you know, we look for, uh, we do things to be able to identify when someone is pretending to be uh, someone like an Office 365 or someone like a Microsoft or an Apple login, an Amazon login, et cetera, because that's exactly what a fish tries to do. You know, so we're looking and we're analyzing, we're seeing, you know, what kind of logos are in this email? What kind of things are happening? What, you know, is it asking for credentials? And is that coming from someplace that's clearly not, uh, you know, Microsoft, a Microsoft domain? So even if it's, you know, some other legitimate part of the, of the internet, you know, they should not be asking for you to log into Microsoft with your login credentials. They should redirect you to Microsoft. So, you know, we can, you know, our machine learning models were able to identify that and know that this, that kind of behavior is exactly the behavior that fishes would do in a compromised uh, scenario. And so we're able to detect that and able to determine that, which ultimately allows us to block that fish. So, you know, again, what is a fairly sophisticated, um, intelligent uh, perspective in, in, in terms of avoiding those telltale signs, we're able to still make that determination based on the behavior of what the actual email is asking the user to do. And so that, that higher level, that behavioral, that uh, computer-based knowledge, is that machine learning model is really uh, at its core how we're able to make that determination and, and what we do all the time. So oftentimes, you know, that machine learning will be paired with something else you know mean they may send it from a brand new domain or something like that triggering multiple hits but you know this goes to show why having all of those things which area one um, checks for having all of those in parallel is really important because you know oftentimes you know if if we do see a sophisticated or a smart attacker we're able to despite that, still be able to go down and understand what that email is doing down to the behavior of, you know, what makes a fish a fish, getting someone to do something that is not, um, you know, that is deceptive. And so by going down to that behavioral level and allowing uh, that machine learning model to determine the behavior, we're able to make that, that fish ultimate uh, determination and block uh, that fish. So again, uh, kind of an interesting fish this week, you know, a credential harvester uh, that was done and, you know, really to bypass a lot of defenses, but was still caught uh, by Area 1 and, and is another great example of how Area 1 is, is able to make those determinations where others miss it and ultimately keep users safe and potential and stop a, you know, potentially large um, uh, bad thing from happening. So again, Area 1 is staying ahead of attackers and is catching uh, what other security tools miss. Awesome. Well, that's the uh, that's this week's edition. Thanks for listening in, and uh, uh, tune in for next week. Thank you.